Um, so obviously, like we want to talk to you about football and everything. But first and foremost, you've been you've been working on the on the front line these last few months. Like, what what's that been like? Yeah, um, do you know it's been busy? Um, everyone's just been so kind and like wishing everyone so well who's been working. But um, it has been that bit busier. But um, everyone's just kind of pulled together, kind of same kind of team atmosphere. Everyone's just kind of digging in and you know, trying to make the most out of the situation and try and look after as many people as we can. Um, but it's been a bit different. Like, it did get a bit busy there in kind of the peak of, um, I suppose, the numbers in Ireland when they were at the highest. But thankfully, they're coming down and, you know, hopefully it can stay that way, you know, for, for the next little while. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Um, and you said in a recent interview that you, the team are desperate to get back. How excited are you for the first league game? Um, I can't wait. I've, as we've been saying, like it's been a, a very extended uh, period of time uh, getting ready and prep for the season, so we all just can't wait. Um, we were playing a friendly match this evening um, as part of our kind of training schedule, so we're just all look, counting down really for the first uh, weekend in August and hopefully we'll be able to, to remember where to go and everything like that. You know, training must have changed a bit now. Can you talk us through what a a typical training session looks like post COVID or post lockdown. Oh, yeah, um, I suppose we're um, we're not really going into the changing rooms and things like that. So we're kind of coming in all our gear. Um, there's various kind of screening and checks. There's a COVID officer kind of been designated to each team in the league. So oh. um, we're getting our temperatures checked just before we go to training. And obviously we've just kind of amongst ourselves advising. Obviously if someone's feeling unwell or any bit of a vague symptom the few days before just don't train and kind of look after yourself and hopefully you know it won't be anything COVID related but it's just safer to be aware of a bit more aware of everyone's symptoms and stuff like that at the moment um, and then just yeah training we've been kind of dividing into two bigger groups at the start um, and trying to avoid contact a little bit at the start but I think now as per the protocol we're able to kind of train yeah. as normal as possible in that regard but just we're just washing our hands and using the hand sanitizer and stuff like that a bit more yeah um so last season Dela they finished sixth I think in the league yeah what do you think you need to do as a team to push forward and move up up the league um I think um since last season we definitely need a bit more experience which I think we'll have gained having come sixth last season um bit of consistency you know, we play really, really well and maybe not take our chances and things like that. So I think consistency and, um, as I said, getting that bit of experience in. We do have a few more players that have added to the team this year, but I think the younger girls um, from the last few seasons are absolutely flying at the moment. So I think they're just ready to show everyone what they're made of. And I think there's going to be hopefully a few surprises this season for us. <laughs> Yeah, it must be a bit like that, having that first phase where you only play everyone once. It's almost a bit like a cup match or something, you know, you kind of, you go in, yeah. not that you don't give everything in every match, but you know what I mean, you're playing a team once, you kind of... Um, yeah, exactly. That's a slightly different feel, doesn't it? Yeah, as you said, definitely the cup kind of atmosphere will literally be brought to every game now because, you know, a team that you might think you, you could beat or you mightn't necessarily be guaranteed to beat, um, you're going to want to get whatever you can out of it. So definitely, yeah, people will be throwing, throwing everything into it. What's the best part of playing for DLR? Um, I think there's a really good team atmosphere. Um, I just really, go, I really enjoy going to training. Um, I love watching the girls. Um, I'm obviously a bit older on the team, so I just love um, the team atmosphere with everyone and I, I kind of love seeing, you know, there's younger girls that are getting such a good opportunity, like when I was that age, it might have been as advanced the league and stuff like that, so it's really good just to see how good these players are and, you know, a bit jealous that I, you know, when I was that age that it wasn't as, the setup wasn't there for me, do you know, so it's just, just exciting to be part of it and hopefully I can keep going for another while. How would you describe yourself as a player? Um, as a player, uh, I'd like to think I'm hardworking, um, energetic, and yeah, hardworking, energetic, and um, give it my all and kind of yeah, take I suppose I take the odd chance. So I wouldn't say I'm an out and out goal scorer, but I like to try and create chances as well. So yeah. What was your? Tell us a bit about your journey. In, into football, like when did you start? How did you get to where you are? 
Um, so I'm 29 now, just turned 29. Um, but so I started playing soccer from a very early age, I don't know, four or five, as, soon, as early as I can remember. Um, and started playing with a club in Limerick um, where I was the only girl on the team up until under 14, I think. Um, and then when you got to that stage, you weren't allowed to have girls on the team anymore. Yeah. Um, was given like my own jersey to get changed into um, for the final season. You know, it was just getting a bit more, a bit more difficult to have a girl on the team. Um, but they were all it was a really nice team. I'm still a friend, friends with a lot of those boys now, and it's it's just it's, it was a nice experience. And then played with the women's team of Ashing and Akadi until I went to college. Then I came up to Dublin to study nursing in UCD. So I joined Rohini United on my first year up in Dublin. I always kind of refer to Rohini as like my uh, kind of Dublin hometown since I've been up here. Um, and yeah, so played played quite a bit in college as well with the World University Games. I, you know, thankfully got on the squad for that twice. Um, had good experiences with Rohini, which qualifying for the Champions League, and yeah, we yeah we'll be going on about that for another few years. <laughs> it was a big moment, and still really good friends with all those girls that we, we meet up occasionally, and always you know talk about how good those times were. Um, and then joined UCD Waves. I'm full time working here on the south side in Dublin, so that commute to the north side was getting that bit more difficult, and I definitely still wanted to be playing. So I was delighted to join UCD Waves, which is now obviously DLR Waves. So yeah, yeah. yeah still going. But any um, any Irish athletes in other sports that that particularly inspired you growing up? Um, I think Kate, or Katie Taylor definitely. Um, she's just so professional and obviously she's a world champion and she's just a brilliant role model for everyone no matter what sport it is in terms of determination and you know how to keep going and never give up and just her training regime and everything so just yeah really proud to have someone like her as well to look up to. How do you manage to juggle your job and football? Um, I kind of just do I suppose um, it's kind of always been something that I've done, you know, even in college, juggling everything. And I, I think I just really enjoy it and I love it. So I don't really find it any inconvenience or a hassle. It's more, I'm quite keen to try and keep going and doing both. Like it probably would be fair enough to give up, you know, being a full-time worker. Like, I don't think anyone would really like speak against you if you, if you couldn't do both, you know, but I just really enjoy it. And um, the department that I'm working in at the moment is also more routine hours. Um, eight to six Monday to Friday so I do have a bit more structure to my kind of my week um, and have like various days off midweek as well and then off the weekend but I, I do an on-call service as well with work so you be bring the phone home with you like I was on call this weekend and you might be called in for a case or two so I have gone and actually played a match while I was on call and had the girls holding the phone on the side <laughs> like, so I would have had to run off but it, thankfully it didn't ring but yeah I just I just really enjoy it so I just might just it's good for me to keep going and I, I love it for my mind and everything as well so I'm thankful that I'm in a job where I can can do both both things that I really really like so yeah.